Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I, I sort of rehearsed it in that room uh, backstage. So I, uh, they, they, the first slide will say that Suhas is here, which is fine, you know, is empirical fact. Um, the, then basically, um, I've done a few things in life. And uh, um, after I am Cal, I went to uh, work with Coca-Cola for a while. And then I was with Nokia, because in those days, it was a big company. I think your generation may not know. It's a company which used to make phones. Uh, so, but you know, I left well before all of the carnage. I wasn't responsible in any way, uh, because I didn't like it there much. And then I started my first company. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the long winded route to my presentation. Uh, so, yeah, so then I started my first company called Channel Play with a bunch of friends at IM Cal. We said, yeah, yeah, entrepreneurship. Those were the days when entrepreneurship wasn't cool. Like I, these days when I talk to entrepreneurs and I ask them, so what did your extended family say when you said you're quitting your job and starting a company? And no one seems to be freaking out anymore. Like the extended family is like, yeah, go for it. Uh, back in my day, they used to be, what, you're leaving a company like Nokia and starting some random company? Uh, but that was how entrepreneurship was. It's good that has changed. Um, then after Channel Play for some time, I, um, I, I like beverages because, I mean, when I was at Coke, it was, it was good fun. The whole Coke versus Pepsi thing, amazing fun. So, um, so yeah, so uh, I, I reconnected with this uh, former boss of mine and uh, he was coming back. So, and, and we said, let's start a beverage company. So anyway, the point of that slide, when it comes up, now remember this is getting more complex and I can blame something else for this one bombing. <laughs> so, so, this long winded story is where I basically say that here were these two or three things I could have talked about during this TED talk, but during this TEDx talk, but uh, I, I thought about it because the whole idea seems to be to think about it and share with you what one is you know, thinking about. And uh, so I thought it has to be more universal because I'm not here to give you a template of how you should start your beverage company, right? And nor am I here to say, hey, listen, there is this cool stuff I'm doing in technology and which will change rural healthcare. I'm sure it will, but that has to be an aside because that's what I am doing. And what will make more sense to you, probably, not saying that you should start following it, uh, is I, will, I just thought, what is the common thread? What have I enjoyed in all of this? Like uh, starting companies and, 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 and all this, what is the one common thing? Uh, and I started thinking about it, and uh, so I thought it's basically, I would really like a slide now. <laughs> because, you know, I think the rule is that if I want to put one slide in your sort of cash memory, you will keep it, and I'll say we have been through this, but now we are sort of on slide three. Uh, <laughs> we are not on slide three, uh, but, you know, um, uh, should I wing it? Should I wing it? I can, I can do that. Ah, yes. This is the one we talked about, right? You remember this slide. I am here, right? Uh, this, yeah, this, this is the one we are talking about, yes. So this uh, broadly is that classic what have I been up to kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I missed this fact. Last couple of years, I've not been doing anything actually. In this whole story, it seemed like I've been doing things all the while. But last two years, I've, I've been on one very big holiday because the Hector thing worked out very well. Uh, I exited and uh, I realized I haven't traveled enough apart from work. And so I started traveling, lived in different places, went to different countries, basically did what used to be called walking the earth. Two years I did that. And then slowly I started getting sucked back in, you know, like, yeah, this is what you should do. And so basically I got back and recently, just this month, few weeks back, I just started my third company. You should look that up. It's called Tardigrade. And uh, people say it's a disgusting name. Um, and, and if you don't know, anyone here knows what a Tardigrade is? See, see that's why you name a company that. <laughs> so, and, and that's, that, now, now some of you will look it up. And the good thing is the ones who will look it up are the ones I would be interested in anyway. So, you know, because the ones who are not interested in such things, it's, a, it's a, such a good selection. You can start your selection process at the naming the company stage, right? 
I don't know why people give companies obvious names. It should be always something that you have to go and look up somewhere. Why would anyone call a company this ugly sounding name? Look it up later. So, so I basically said the thing that I've enjoyed, the thing, the reason I've done all of this is because I've enjoyed arguing essentially. I like logic and, I, I, and therefore I thought I'll make this about uh, what within argument I like. Like the, the argument itself, what do I like about it? I have no locus standi to speak about it except what I've read and thought because I've, I've not studied this as a subject. But essentially I thought this is the one common thread. This is the reason I quit a company. This is the reason just to have more intelligent arguments with people I work with. If I boil it down, that is it. That's the reason we start companies with friends. That's the reason we make friends. We, we, we make friends because we have good arguments with them. Um, so I shouldn't say we, I will say I. Um, because I, mean, I don't think everyone makes friends for, to argue with them, but I do. So, so, so anyway, so this is my take and uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about my take on it. And I don't know of how much use it will be, but we'll leave that for later. So yeah, so I have a small story to tell. Now why I have sequenced the next few slides, you know, with few words is because I got the feedback that I used too many words. But all said and done, soon we'll have a lot of words. I'm so sorry. But this time round, I'll read a story out. So can we go on, please? So, no, no, just one, just one at a time. <laughs> yeah, so this is the story of a very delightful argument. I really like this argument. And, and we'll just move on. Uh, so it is from 1949. And more specifically, it is from the time when the Constitution of India was getting framed, uh, 3rd September. I got this from the minutes of this meeting, there, there's so much data available in this world, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you know, you can read anything, it can be of absolutely zero use to you, and you can spend hours reading about it. They just love that. Uh, so yeah, th so like I said, I have not studied history, I'm not a student of history at all, I've not studied civics or so, uh, beyond, you know, ICSC or whatever, but so, but still, I'm going to do this trip. So, so there is this meeting going on in Delhi, uh, 3rd of September, 1949. And uh, in the chair is the vice president. Uh, there is Mr. Naziruddin Ahmed who opens, says, sir, uh, so what I'll do is, because I don't want to have too many words that you have to read, so I'll try and enact it. So when I'm speaking from here, I'm speaking at Ms. as Mr. Naziruddin Ahmed, whom you'll get to know quite well. When I go and speak from there, I'm speaking as Dr. Bhimra Ambedkar, whom you know very well, right? So Dr. Naziruddin Ahmed opens this, says, Sir, I would seek your permission to make a verbal change in my amendment number 290. Mind it, 290. 290, number 289 has been moved by Mr. Kamath. I wish to move the next entry and I seek your permission to make a slight verbal alteration. I know that the amendment will never be accepted, that it will never even be considered, so there is no harm in making the amendment look better. Am I going too fast? Thank you. But you are always kind. I mean, people never say, yeah, yeah, you just slow down. <laughs> so anyway, so basically, Mr. Ahmed wants an amendment. He wants to change the words in the constitution which say when can imprisonment be done where it says to prevent overthrow of the government by force he wants it changed to the word security of the state so he's drawing a distinction between government and state so the vice president says yes yes go ahead with the amendment and so uh, mr ahmed says i beg to move we move on i'm here now which as you remember very well is dr bhim rambedkar speaking so he says, Sir, may I suggest to my friend that if he is prepared to accept the wording as I suggest now, namely connected with the security of the state, so he's saying, yes, I get your point, sort of, then I shall be prepared to accept it because we have already used it previously. Uh, so at this stage, it would seem that Mr. Ahmed would accept Bhimra Ambedkar, giant of the Indian legal system, also at this time a towering personality. but. What I find fascinating is that Mr. Ahmed at this stage says that I'm grateful to Dr. Ambedkar, but this is exactly the change which I was asking the Vice President to permit me to make. So uh, just to summarize, uh, Dr. Ambedkar said, yes, yes, you're right, we will, I am with you. But he says, but I want to ask the Vice President to make, let me make this change. And there is a bit of an argument. I'll just speed up because we lost some slide, uh, some time on the slides. Uh, so basically, Dr. Ambedkar says, 
Okay, then there is no need to speak about it. If my honourable friend will move the amendment as I have suggested, then I am prepared to accept it. Please move on. Then Mr. Ahmed says, but I must move my amendment. It is important for him to move the amendment, even though Dr. Ambedkar is accepting it, which the Vice President says is accepted. Why are you? Why are we still arguing? And he points out that my honourable friend, sorry, this had to, no, this was here. Sorry, if my honourable friend fails to recognise that I was going to move an amendment which is correct and exactly corresponds to his ideas, then I cannot help it. I'll just repeat what the amendment is. The amendment is that there is provision to imprison people if they are planning overthrow of the government. He wants to change to the overthrow of the state because he's saying the state and the government are different. Dr. Ambedkar has agreed, but he's saying, I still want to put this on record. So we go on. Go on, please. One more slide. So, uh, Dr. Ambedkar says, yes, that's the reason I accept it, because we, we, we get what you're saying. And, but, sorry, this is very quick, so, but I didn't get any exercise today anyway. Uh, and, and, and then Dr. Ahmed says, but sir, he has not made it clear why he is accepting it. So, the point for him is not just that there's agreement, but the point is, why is there agreement? So, uh, Dr. Ambedkar says, I'll just do it shorter. Uh, says, I have said that security of state is proper. He says that expression is proper. Let's go with security of the state. Let's not worry about security of the government. Those are two different things. You're all getting the difference between government and state, right? Government is what is in power. State is the entity, the idea of India itself, right? So the important point, and I'm whizzing through, I, I had more of a performance planned around this. But Dr. Ahmed says the house should know why is there this nervousness about the exposure of bad drafting? And at this stage is where I see the genius of Dr. Ambedkar. He says, he recognizes what has happened. He says, if my honorable friend is satisfied with an admission on my part that I have made a mistake, then I am prepared to make it. Now just put this in perspective. One of the most towering leaders of that time in this debate says, yes, I made a mistake. There's another back and forth. Eventually, Dr. Ambedkar says, very well, we have bungled, shall we say. So at this point, what you realize is this towering figure who could have used his force of personality to win this argument realizes that this other person is making the logical point and is happy to concede. Why I had this long story and the performance is because I thought this was a great example of an argument being about nuance, about uh, reason and about a certain things. And I thought I'll use this example to define what I think a great argument is. So now, could we go on? Could you put this on full screen, please? Full screen, please? Yeah, and, and you can go on. Yeah, so, so um, within this, uh, if, if one sees, there are a lot of a priori assumptions that both parties have agreed to. They are now talking of Amendment 290, so they are not bringing up things which were already covered up to Amendment 289, uh, which is very, very important because very often a lot of bad arguments are just about the same thing being repeated multiple times, while in this case, this is a whole new point and both parties are respecting each other enough to say, yes, we know the broad story up to 289, let's not go there, this is 290, <laughs> right? So they're serious about this. The second point is, now in argument number N comes up, which is derived from these a priori assumptions, like you had a certain set of assumptions and now the new argument is on the table. Let's say I have said this based on this. That's the structure of the argument which opens up the counter argument. At this stage the counter argument can be accepted, not accepted, it could be verifiably true, verifiably false. In a number of ways two intelligent people or multiple intelligent people will analyze it and eventually one will say yes you were right, I was wrong. Now this to me is, is in some ways, it's the, it's the greatest level the human mind has gone to and which is why I said that it's the thing I enjoy most because this is the way thought progresses, this is the way what sets us apart from everything else living is our mind is put to work um, and, and this structure, this constant exercise 
is what I thought was my universal common thing which I would like to share uh, from whatever else I have done. I'll just move on a little bit. But now there are many disincentives. I mean, not now. There probably have always been. There are in disincentives for... Can you see this graph? Is it visible back? Should I read? Can you see it? Oh, sorry. This is the problem. So, yeah. So, 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 so if we think of the disincentives for, for uh, conceding an argument, because not everyone will uh, will have the the confidence of uh, of or, or the self esteem to say yeah i concede this one There's someone like dr ambedkar doing it putting it on record for people you know 60 70 years later like people like me who have nothing better to do who are reading it saying oh yeah this is great uh, so but he has done it he's put it out there he conceded an argument two minutes left oh Okay, so I mean, I'll just quickly race through. Um, uh, the other problem is that we live with quality of hashtag is important. Quality of hashtag usually works in the opposite direction of complexity. So, you know, there is that much disincentive to be making an argument. A strong argument needs to be articulated quite well. And like we just saw, just three minutes left. And this was a strong argument coming up, right? Uh, so, so we'll move on. Uh, yeah, this, this, you know, this screen, this WhatsApp thing, this, this is something I wanted to talk to you about. What's going on? Uh, you, you have arguments which, we, we, instead of arguing, we have forwards, right? I mean, there's forward one, there's forward two, forward three sent from some cousin's husband who doesn't just want India to, you know, fight its enemies in its neighborhood, but wants Indian army to invade the world or something like that. And, and, and then I'm about to write and my mother somewhere else in some other city sees Suhas is typing. She calls me up, says, don't fight in my family group. Uh, they are all my relatives. Don't argue with my relatives. And, 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 then, and then when you eventually can't help it and you make the point and then suddenly people are saying you're anti-national. I just don't get it. I'm confused about this whole thing. But it's happening. It's right here, right? Uh, please let's go on. I, I have more good WhatsApp jokes. You are sure, right? They're easy jokes. But I can't make them now. Anyway, this last American election was brilliant from the point of view of arguments. Like if you take any five arguments made in that campaign at random, this whole presentation is made. Uh, like this one. This, this, this tweet. This guy says, yeah, Donald Trump has been talking about uh, voter fraud and uh, but can and, and everyone's criticizing him for it, but can you prove that there was no voter fraud? Uh, that's, that was so far out, and it was far out in itself, but then this tweet from a 16-year-old was retweeted by the now President of the United States. This is a, a standard logical fallacy. You cannot turn an argument around and say, hey, prove the negative. Um, very difficult to do so. So the burden of proof should be on the person making the claim, but now we are in a situation where you can make the claim and not have to prove it. Should fight that, right? Can we go on? This is too complex, we'll skip. Uh, there are a number of logical fallacies uh, in, in, uh, in this whole game. When you are making your arguments, it's good to look up what are the classic errors. Uh, what about re? Here, people would know about it, right? What about re is like, you are saying something, I'm saying something, I'm saying that's illogical, and you say, yeah, you're criticizing me for being illogical, but you never say anything about Salman Khan movies, <laughs> right? Uh, goes on all the time. This is my point is, I don't like that argument. So the point I'm making is, there was that one great argument, there are these arguments, and uh, I'm totally on time now. Um, so, I could have, when I was thinking about this TED talk, I could have talked about beverages and you know the great story, small startup fighting Coke, fighting Pepsi, so on and so forth. There are some great stories. If you're interested at some stage, sit down, talk about it. Um, I could have talked about the inspiring stuff that I'm now trying to do with rural healthcare and technology. And I would obviously like to talk to some of you about it at some stage, but obviously today we don't have that time. Uh, but instead, what I thought, is I'll keep it reasonably simple. Um, yeah, that my, my play didn't work out very well between Dr. Midka. But, but still, it's still quite simple, right, what I'm saying. And, and, and the point is, what I thought is I'll leave you with a wish, basically, to have a lot of arguments, argue often, argue long, but argue good. 
uh, by which I don't mean argue aside, I just mean argue the way you are to argue, right? Be logical about it. Uh, and I've kept it on time. Uh, you can write to me. My email ID must circulate now around Jadavpur. You can, I'm very happy to respond. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn because obviously there are more things to talk about.